situation has been evolving uh, rapidly. The last 24 hours has been um, a situation in my 36 year career that I haven't seen evolve so quickly in terms of the escalation of the effort the city is making and various organizations across the country are taking. Um, with that, I ask for some patience because uh, sometimes the messaging doesn't always um, keep pace with the uh, with the events, and we ask for your patience as this situation rapidly evolves um, over the uh, next period of time. As Dr. Ed just said, we have three confirmed cases of COVID-19 in oh, Ottawa, and each of those cases was contracted as a result of international oh, travel, which is a, a significant difference in terms of how we expect this to evolve. The changes we're instituting are intended to help us stay ahead of the curve when ultimately we will see transmission between people who haven't traveled. And uh, this is to help stop or minimize possible spread within our communities. Um, uh, Mayor Watson has uh, announced a number of measures um, that, uh, and closures that our senior leadership team in our emergency operations center has recommended. Um, and we've adopted those today, and this is truly about minimizing the spike in the time and the severity of cases. So this is a partnership between the city and a partnership with our residents. The call's been made. We're locking down. Say this is in my forecast for world events. More wildfires. More political things. Hurricanes, typhoons, aliens, more me too's. Even Yellowstone or a nuclear meltdown. The war feels more likely at this point. Just about anything but a global pandemic. For a year, many were hoping it wouldn't suck. This is not a good start. But that's the prayer for every year. set aside, and I imagine I'll be facing a lot of the latter before this is over, but considering where I am right now in the grand scheme of things, I should consider myself lucky. Writing like this isn't all that familiar, certainly not as a means of logging my days. If anything, it's a measure to keep tabs on my mental state. But hopefully nothing more than a time killer. Being a civil servant who's normally only home to sleep, I imagine I'll be having trouble with this the most. There are my roommate's many plants and recently purchased hamster now that she's decided to quarantine with her real grandmother. Though I can't see how changing a rodent's bedding will eat up much People time. Seem to me, quite uh, reflective at the moment, realizing that there is actually a threat to to life going on. So, as of now, everyone needs to be two meters or six feet apart. The whole world needs to be physically distanced. And this is literally the whole world now. This is a pandemic in the truest uh, sense of the word. I don't deny that my situation is rather fortunate. Not just from being low risk in a first world country. By pure coincidence, I'm well stocked. 
won't be stuck in giant socially distanced lines at the pharmacy. All the latex gloves I've compulsively taken from the doctors might finally come in handy. No lack of general amusement. And if I know myself like I think I do, my only concern should be with being too stocked and too busy consuming it to do anything else. Financials shouldn't be a problem. If the government doesn't want to keep me employed to stay at home, they'll just pay me to do the same through unemployment. Not that I'm expecting this to be a paid vacation, but as long as I keep my mind off certain things and focus on the few responsibilities I'm left with, I should be able to manage hey! just fine. Oh. said it's their urine. <clears throat> no, yeah, it's been like completely hands off. I've um, uh, kept my ear to them. I can hear them. Uh, if she comes out every so often. I'm really not doing anything more than looking and listening. Yes, I am aware that that happens. But yeah, I'm going to stay on it and... Um, yeah, if you can get in touch, yeah, with um, someone who's uh, maybe more equipped to deal with the situation, can um, especially if you're looking to um, give the litter back to the pet store eventually anyway. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, all the best. Just, uh, you know, hang tight, stay safe. Okay, yeah, we will do. All right, take care. the hardest hit younger people are not spared so uh, dr. Tredros is clearly saying that this is not just a disease of older people although they are normally hardest hit he went on to say people under 50 make up a significant proportion of patients requiring hospitalization so this is uh, quite sobering really dr. Tredros says that they have a message for young people that you are not invincible Now he did then go on to compliment the vast majority of young people who have complied with the, the requirements of closing down and social isolation that is required. Now how do you uh, optimise your immune system? Well the World Health Organisation has said uh, it helps your immune system as possible and I added vitamin D to my Limit alcohol so they're officially saying limit alcohol to improve your immune system. Avoid sugars and sugar drinks. Don't smoke. This increases the severity of risk. So this is a very clear, very clear message here. The data has accumulated and indeed we surmised this way back in the early days of the program. That smoking predisposes people to more severe infections. So if you do smoke, this is a good time to stop smoking. If you are drinking a lot of alcohol, then cut down your alcohol. If you can go out, he advised exercising outside, depending on the local regulations in your area, from the social isolated section. genuinely expected the downtown core to look like Pyongyang. Thus 
far it's just Sunday level traffic in the city that fun forgot. Though the slogan hits at less truth when faced with bars and restaurants close the world over. I'm sure the current state of things is still setting in people's minds. As many like me are out here when they shouldn't be. Being one of them, I'm in no position to cast stones. But I can't help but think that we're all out here looking for something familiar. Something that doesn't exist right now. Half of my heart breaks for these destitute churchgoers. The other half wants to smack them on the back of the head and tell them to wake the fuck up. It's not like barflies have been obliviously flocking to close. Actually, now that I think about it, this argument's moot considering the lines to the LCBO. There are probably more drunken desperados out there than there are people in need of groceries. I've got enough sense and willpower to avoid both scenarios. Yet not enough to know that a game store would be closed. takes a lot to deter certain types. In or out of a pandemic. The most aggravating thing so far has to be social distancing with elevators. And the fact that I'm on the top floor. Keeping up with world news for updates and numbers didn't last long. Mass media has a knack for making you feel confused, anxious, and defeated on a normal day. Now they have the best global disaster they could ask for. already feels like I'm reaching for ways to fill my time. Engaging in a familiar pastime already feels like gearing up for a thankless task. Maybe because there's no end in sight. Video games felt like an obvious answer, but I still have a bad taste in my mouth post-76. Reminds me of Jarhead, when all the marines can fill their days with is gun cleaning and masturbation. One look online seems to indicate that people are pretty keen on losing their minds.
or at least their grip on reality. This has been the norm for a while now, but under normal circumstances, you could disconnect, go outside, and remind yourself that life is moving on as normal, unaffected. Not so much now. Day-to-day -day life pausing for so many, whose most trusted companion may have already been their phones, seems to be pouring our fears and mistrusts into a kettle. And it's boiling. I'm sure if I went down the appropriate rabbit hole, I could also consume myself with the notion that this is all a hoax invented by the World Health Organization to pump us with vaccines. But an unexpected hamster litter is enough to make my mind frantic. If I'm learning anything from writing like this, it's that your stupid thoughts are best kept to yourself. But ultimately, how much can be genuinely expected from a population whose lives have been upended by something they can't even see? A friend of mine in college didn't necessarily believe anything was happening that wasn't physically within eyeshot. I always thought that was stupid, but I'm beginning to understand the sentiment. The majority of us in isolation won't be coming in contact with the virus anytime soon, if ever. Likely won't know anyone who gets it either. Won't be working on the front line. Won't be losing a business. Won't be stuck servicing or living in a nursing home. Won't be trapped with an abuser. Not outright homeless though I'm as divided on their incessant panhandling in times like this as I am on those folks in search of a church. Technically, I suppose I'm not alone. Though with a litter to tend to, she's hardly out enough to call company. But I can't keep my eyes off her when she is. It's like watching a fireplace. One that's cooked up God knows how many of those eraser head gummy bears. Unless she's eating them.
Come on up. Days are blending together. Time has lost all significance. Might have to do with the fact that this is the first time I've ever really been on my own. With a routine that's basically consisted of work, school, or going out. Can't remember the last time I went more than a weekend stuck with my own thoughts. It's much harder to enjoy anything or be motivated to enjoy anything when there's no one else around. Though I've heard it said that what makes character is what you do when no one's watching. Seems like yesterday there were three tenants in this apartment. One's chosen not to stay. And I told the other one she couldn't. It wasn't a simple choice to make. Especially when you were engaged to that person. I convinced myself it was the best thing for both of us, without factoring in the looming doomsday scenario that would have been much easier with company. Re-listening to XMM for the thousandth time isn't quite the same without having someone to introduce it to. Lost the masked singer as a guilty pleasure. No companion to mock the current online climate with. Combing through the influx of unfiltered mental illness is far more depressing when read with a straight face. Texans stocking guns and ammunition like everyone else stocks toilet paper. While I sit at home watering plants and growing hamsters. Not sure what to make of any of it. You said you did not go to school or get training. Is this right? Pacing until it's late enough to drink. Were you ready? There's plenty more that I should be dealing with. You said you were ready, willing, and capable of working. Is this right? Yet I want nothing to do with any of it. Is there any other money that you have not told us about that you received or will receive for this two-week period? I imagine the best equipped to live like this is a seasoned shut-in or social outcast. Never thought I'd be envious. I have to remind myself that right now, even within my extended family, I probably have it the easiest. Spread over more than five countries, half of which are hotspots. There's at least one cousin who's stuck abroad due to school. Though I'm aware they're all safe, and doing as well as they can be. They're all zooming together as our friends and co-workers. I have no interest in joining in, though no one's happy about that. Stuck inside avoiding one virus, no use letting another in. And right now I only care to speak to someone who I can really speak to. Then again, with every excuse now to avoid interaction, would I really have benefited from the company I let go? Not sure what to think anymore. Ending a cold relationship before making the mistake of a premature marriage seemed like looking towards the long term for both of us. Here's to ignoring the short term.
It may feel like there's little to no continuity in my existence right now. Yet as it stands, life remains as linear as ever. Been over a thousand a day for the last three days. So over, over, well over three thousand have died. And they're the deaths that are known about. I suspect there's many more people dying at home with other comorbidities that haven't been registered, just as I suspect is the case. In it's getting time. progressively worse out there. And the numbers the are absurd number in some places. Going to go on increasing they the aren't United great States, here either. At least but they're a far cry from south of the border. For another week, or Spain. Or Italy. Yemen. So, avoid going out, wear a mask as they're in my city. I could go on. We'll Still never be at the point where we have to responses. bury our dead in parks or ditches. Are taking minimal measures trying to keep my upper nice. lip stiff. Other states like California but my mind has become such a viper's nest. And I'm starting to recognize so, the voice in my head more than my own. Medication is stemming my anxiety. My but it isn't stemming my thoughts. And I would predict all the solo rounds of darts in place of pool are hardly aiding my sanity. Sleep is less of an escape now. And I'm drinking too much to get there. Getting some bad ideas in my head. Ones that feel just a bit too comforting. Would love to vent these feelings. But I'm laughing in a drum kit or a punching bag. Playing piano with you if my curves. keyboard was longer than my forearm. I could distract York myself with tidying. But seeing as 90% of the apartment belongs to an absent roommate, there's not much in my jurisdiction. Maybe join the bandwagon of cutting my own hair. Can't stand this ponytail.
I'm sure I'll go back on this later. But I was wrong. I really think I was wrong. Mama, do I need to make some more space for me down here? Mama, I'll take the wheel out. You can have some space to run around and dig. Okay. I'm coming back up. Sewing and things, but I think haberdashery just means uh, anything to do with sewing and buttons and uh, uh, cloth and uh, thread and needles and things like that. So haberdashery shops are reopening early in France. The reason being is to encourage people to make their own masks. So I thought that was really encouraging that people could make their own masks because we need people to be wearing masks in public, in my view, especially on public transport, especially in supermarkets so that infected people do not infect uninfected people. Spain, now, um, a lot of cases in Spain, of course, as we know. This was the deaths up to, uh, up to today, up to Saturday. So they're there, the Friday to uh, Saturday deaths, they're the Thursday to Friday deaths. Disappointing to see a bit of an increase, but of course we do know that the overall trend is down still leaves uh, over 22,000 people in Spain, no longer with us. Belgium, again, relatively small country in Belgium, so quite a lot of cases per capita, quite a lot of deaths per capita in Belgium. Small country. Starting reopening on the 11th of uh, May, and I'm glad to see that, I think it was over the age of 10 or 12, over the age of 12, I think, Masson, public transport are going to be mandated, legal requirement. It's just such common sense to me, I just don't know why <coughs> people are doing this. Now the UK cases are increasing. These deaths are hospital deaths, so we know it's an underestimate by 50%. So the real, the real death rate in the UK now sadly is uh, 
be amazed if it's less than 30 pounds, unfortunately, because of debts and care homes and debts at home. But the World Health Organization have been saying that up to 50% of debts in Europe <coughs> could well be in, uh, in care facilities, nursing homes and care facilities. So unfortunately that number is going to carry on rising. Another 768 in the last 24 hours. Now, whenever I mention Sweden, I get, <laughs> I get attacked from both sides. Uh, I don't pretend to fully understand what's going on in Sweden. I strongly suspect that there's going to be a few PhDs done on the Sweden situation. It's not possible to keep up with it. But we do know that there's an increasing number of deaths. So cases and the deaths. And the death rate in Sweden is currently higher than in its neighbours. So it's higher than... Representing him here, but it seems the strategy is to go for herd immunity in Sweden by exposing people in lower risk groups, so the young, a bit, and building up herd immunity in them. Then, when a lot of those people are immune, they're going to, as it were, protect the more vulnerable people round about because the virus will go from an infected person, then they'll bump into a person who has the immunity, and they won't spread it onto a vulnerable person. That seems to be their thinking not really commenting on it, um, it doesn't seem to be working because the death rates are high, but that seems to be what they're doing, and it works on trust rather than <coughs> It is interesting that the, uh, some senior public <coughs> expressing reticence about it. Um, it looks like um, the results... <coughs> Turns out the mother loves that wheel at night. And the sound is quite soothing. It's more likely the hangovers. But my dreams are so vivid now that it feels like they're wearing me out during the day. Sleep is where the work starts. And the day is spent regaining energy. Was, um, Though I'm not the only one working the night shift. Is that a little mama hum? What are you doing in the bottom, Mama? Oh, mama, what are you doing in the bottom? What's going on in the bottom? No. Why don't you manage that? Did I just pass it from the weed and move through the base all the way to the bottom? Mama. Mama. Oh, look at you. The scenario's been pretty consistent. 
I'm never at ground level, always up high, like I'm on a balcony, in the city's toast in an orangey red. All I remember hearing is commotion, shouting and screaming, and I'm just waiting for something really bad to happen. Reads like an average dream world on paper, but in the moment, completely real. I always wake up before the bad thing. Then I take a walk outside. And everything feels surreal. Could be the sounds of all the strange birds I'm starting to hear or the fact that I still seem to be the only person wearing a face mask out in public. It all mounts up, until life feels like an anxiety dream, one where I'm walking down the street with underwear on my face. Hamster culling them, 
which means the hamster will kill the babies if she feels threatened or stressed at all. Now you can continue to feed her and give her fresh water. Of course, try to have the water bottle and food dish um, on the opposite side of the cage so you can um, change these out as quietly and as peacefully as possible. So once the pups are 14 to 18 days old, their eyes should be opening by now and once their eyes have opened, that means it is safe for you to touch them and it also means you can clean the cage at this time. At two weeks old, the baby hamsters are already starting to eat some pieces of food that the mom brings back. They also may be going out of the nest and walking around, um, exploring the cage, learning how to drink from the water bottle, things like that. Generally at three weeks of age, this is when the pups are going to be weaned from the mother, meaning they no longer will need their mother's milk. Also at three weeks of age, they will start to be play fighting with each other, which is completely normal. Though even though the pups may not need their mother's milk anymore, this doesn't mean they should be separated from their mom quite just yet. Pups shouldn't be separated from their mother until 28 days of age, unless absolutely necessary. Once they are 28 days, you are going to want to separate them into same-sex cages, so females in one and males in the other. Because at four weeks old, hamsters can start reproducing with each other, and that is something you don't want. Now, Syrian hamsters can stay with their same-sex siblings from five weeks to eight weeks. You are going to want to watch clo closely to make sure the difference between play fighting and actual fighting. Once you see that they are actually fighting, you are going to slowly want to separate them all. And by eight weeks of age, they all should be in their own separate cages because Syrians are a solitary species of hamster. Pups also should not be rehomed yeah, younger than eating, six weeks of mental. age. During four to five weeks of age, they are learning quite a bit from their mother, their siblings. Oh, restless, that's for sure. I don't know. A lot more windows lit up at night than I can see from the balcony. Feeling the same as most people. How are you guys doing? I've never read that one. Um, I've always meant to, uh, but uh, I really should. No, I'm not spoken. You seen Grandma and Grandpa recently? Yeah, I know how they're doing. Good. Yeah, that's good. Staying inside. I guess that's easier for them than most people, right? Yeah, well, they always get on each other's nerves. Yeah. How are the cats? Typical. I miss them. Yeah, they've certainly shown up just recently. Um, the mom moved all of them down from the top of the cage to the bottom. Don't know how she did it, but she did it. Looks like my time's up. Should have spent less in hindsight on echoing DSP and Mersh through my notebook. We're looking up how to tell you news more time on the incoming hamster issue or any of the numerous things that are even remotely important like figuring out if I actually should be isolating my groceries for a month or getting in touch with family friends discarded companions or whether or not I should be drinking bleach though I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that one thinking about it now not even sure I have the tools and materials to do what I promised. I may be far from the high point of my life, whatever that was or will be, but it's certainly not low enough to let my roommate down when she's got so much on her plate, and there's
there's some sense of obligation to the lives brought into existence in my home. Get back to whatever. Piss off the cats for me. Love you, Dad. All right. No, and tell Samara I say hi. I really miss my parents. Bye. So bad. Insane. Let's get this one on just yeah. I swept up the cage just to be sure. They survived. All eight of them.
still trying to figure out their genders that's um, far more difficult than I anticipated uh, I think it's about 60 40 yeah so like four guys oh, what, no, no no five guys three girls yeah I'm not gonna lie I was uh, pretty stressed out about um, dealing with this not so much at the beginning, but uh, the second they started uh, moving around, that really, um, that was a real reality check. Um, definitely, uh, you can get attached to these little suckers pretty quick, that's for sure. I, I, I'm thinking I'm just gonna maybe keep a few around. Yeah, like they would, like I'll keep them as my own pets. Uh, they're just, um, I don't know, they're a real stress reliever, it's occupying a lot of time. We can give some back or whatever. I mean, I can I can take them once, uh, oh, what, are they, what are they planning on doing? Like curbside pickup or whatever? I can see if I can just drop them off, um, some of them, and then, uh, yeah, just uh, keep the rest. Well, yeah, I know they have to stay with, but I mean, once, once that's over, uh, like you don't have to take care, uh, you don't have to deal with yeah, okay, but I mean, uh, I mean, or, or I, even I can call them back. You don't have to do anything. I mean, it's, uh, if uh, I call it off, then it's one thing less on their plate, right? Yeah, I know, I know, you got, uh, yeah. No, I don't, I, I don't want this um, stressing you out on your end. I'm just saying I can, yeah. No, I'm just more than willing to, it would be my responsibility, you know? Like, yes, they do take up a lot of space. I am, yes, they're going into bins. I have to separate them again into more bins. I found this little tank and cleaned it up and uh, I thought we could put that on the table. That way we could have a little place for them to run around while we eat or something. No, I mean, I'm just, I feel a lot more prepared now and I feel like it's not as much of a burden as I was. I know. All right, well, I. Yeah, I can, I can have them ready. I mean, like we both said, it's going to be a, a little while longer, but. Um... Yeah, no, I was just uh, getting kind of used to them. They're gonna get really uh, well-grown beans, that's for sure. Like, uh, the mom and I did a pretty decent job. All right, well, um, I will deal with everything else. Take care of you and uh, take care of everything on your end. No, 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 no. Yep. Okay. Fucker! It's fucking serious. It's not her fucking problem anymore. It's not her fucking problem anymore. I can fucking deal with it. Fuck!
keeping them will not go down well. Mason, you want to go to his contact? We may support yourself in 
was certainly going to come across people suffering from it. And it really is a good thing if you are in a position to help. So, the World Health Organization and the United Nations go on. Mental health problems, including depression and anxiety, are some of the greatest causes of misery in our world. Now, the use of the term here is misery. This is a miserable situation to be in. Very strong language. And I agree with you. Even when the pandemic is brought on, there is anxiety and depression. The disease is still getting worse in many other parts of the world. And even when the lockdown finishes and the disease goes away, the mental side doesn't snap back into place straight away. It can take time. There can be ongoing effects. So this is something we all need to know about. The United Nations report also says the mental health and well-being of all societies have been severely impacted by this crisis and are a priority to be addressed urgently. So you and me today are addressing this. I hope for some meaningful The United Nations is strongly committed to creating a world in which everyone, everywhere, has someone to turn to or psychological support. Now sometimes that someone that we need to turn to might be a mental health professional. But other times the person that is turned to may be you. Or the person that you turn to may be a relative or a friend. But very often someone is going to turn to you for help and support. And I'm hoping that this is going to put in a position where you're more able to do that. Yeah, help. I'm sorry I haven't. Certainly yeah, times when I need help, that's for sure. Very, very soon now, that plenty of references for today's material, so right. do look at okay. those at your left. I know this is going to be a Obviously, tough I'll sell for you right now, but at this point I have really everything set up now, um, to house all of these hamsters. COVID-19 virus, not only attacking Okay, well, attacking you didn't tell me that. Mental health and well-being as well. Yes, I knew they were waiting for these them, but you said nothing together. about someone coming and to this is giving rise to psychological suffering okay, now note is that there word any suffering way I can get in touch with them suffering. uh huh if you have had a period of depression or anxiety no you just i mean you suffering. seem pretty stressed out just about the same as physical such the suffering is quite you're not going in touch real like i am dealing with this this is entirely on my end right now. of and uh, loss of loved if ones if you 
have no Dr. idea Dawson, when you're job. coming back. I don't see Isolation how it affects you whatsoever reference. if I decide to keep these fucking hamsters. Yeah, All of I these things are ready. I will get eight little boxes record. ready, and um, yeah, something I will else that I've noticed, and that is that. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes you, the way you're feeling is proportionate. Whatever, I'm going to take care of the difficulty okay. Bye. you are experiencing. Other times, the distress that you're feeling Get is disproportionate fuck. to the difficulty you might be in. I knew a blizzard in May was a bad omen. I failed them. I failed myself. Kept my promise.
Self, or are you too weak to even do that? Okay, mama, come here. You're gonna look after me. I'm gonna look after you, okay?
Might have been a boss mama. I do. Mama. Mama. Now for this, let's get something done. Do something. Something. How about this? Of course, it's just a bus. Why wouldn't I know that? I fucking live here.
No. Sleep schedule now. Oh, wait, you're not. No.